Hey there music teachers, great to be back with you again. Today we are talking about setting up marketing online for your music studio. So now is a really interesting time to be looking at how you market your studio online and in person, but how you market your studio online matters so much more right now and it's always mattered a lot. So now might be the time that you want to prioritize it, especially as we head into summer for many of us and it's a great time to get everything in order before parents start looking at stuff that they want for their kids over the summer or going into September. So today we're going to be diving into ideas about effective websites and other online marketing avenues that you can try. I'll be answering any questions that you have live about online um, marketing for music studios and marketing for music studios in general. I'll be taking you on a tour through my own site and the things that I know I need to update, as well as another teacher who's volunteered for me to re review her site and see what we can approve there. So let's get started. Welcome to everybody who is here in the chat. It is fantastic to have you here again. As you join me, please do say hi and hello and where you are and what you want to learn today because I love to hear from all of you who are watching live and on the replay. I love to see comments come through then as well. So as I mentioned, we're talking about marketing today, but if you haven't joined us before, I just want to give you an extra special welcome and let you know about the schedule. So this is our schedule at the moment for our Vibrant Music Teacher Chats. They're on three times a week as you can see. Those times are in Dublin time so if you're not in my time zone you might have to tweak them a bit or think about or ha what it's going to be for you but in the US it's going to be in the morning and over here in Europe it's going to be in the afternoon and in Australia it's going to be probably too late for you to be watching live. So that's a general like, guideline for you. So we go live three times a week here on the channel to connect you with ideas and inspiration and commiseration that you need right now. We started doing this, I started doing this I say we because there's several members who come along live every week and I feel like we're doing it together. But we started a couple of months ago. Oh my gosh, is it that much? Like six weeks ago maybe. Doing these three times a week. And we're going to be continuing up until the end of June. So if you haven't joined us before, you're very welcome here. And I'm excited to see you come back again for another one of these chats, if you're able to. We discuss different topics each time. I take questions from you guys live and I love the interaction that happens there. And I always have some prepared points on a topic that I think is pertinent to teachers right now. So we're going to be continuing this three times a week for the rest of this month because it's now June. And then we'll see how we go in the summer. We might go down to one time a week. We'll see what makes sense. Heather! Hi! Kia ora to you too! Great to see you here joining us from New Zealand. It must be late indeed over there. So thank you for joining me on our late night chat for you. Hi Joanne Marie, great to see you. Elizabeth and Charlotte, awesome stuff. So we're going to be diving into websites right now. I wanted to let you know um, before we do that, that we have a course. So members who are watching, we have a course coming out later this month on marketing that's going to help you with this stuff further. Now absolutely stay with me here now, but know that we have a more comprehensive course. So if anything here seems overwhelming or you feel like you're having trouble understanding how you would do this step by step, or you don't have a website, for example, we're going to have a few full course about this later this month inside VMT. If you're not a member, you can sign up. Where's my coupon? It is there. That is a coupon code to get a one week trial if you want to test it out, see if it's right for you. But in a few weeks, we'll have our marketing course up and it's, it's a little bit different to our regular courses. It was an epic one to put together um, and it was... a I'm really excited to get into teacher's hands, so hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Um, Heather, it's 1am. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I thought it was somewhere around there. Well, you're super welcome. I hope this doesn't, that we're not interrupting your sleep, that you're up anyway, I presume. Hi from Singapore. Okay, great to see you here too. Might, might be kind of late for you too, Dorothy. 
And Lori, hi, welcome back. Awesome to see you here. Okay, so I have a couple of websites to show you guys around, but I very much want this to be an interactive Q&A session. So let me know what you want to know about marketing online, any particular areas you want me to look at. If you want me to talk about Facebook pages briefly or anything like that, I absolutely can. I'm going to focus mainly on websites because that's what I believe is the most important factor here. So as we're all, many of us are still teaching online, most of us are, possibly not you, Heather, over in New Zealand, are you back in person? Possibly. But for many of us, we're still teaching online. We probably will be for the rest of the summer. We may be in September. In Ireland, it's looking fairly hopeful that we might be back in person in September for one-on-one -on -one lessons because the schools uh, are most likely starting back. Depends on how the research shakes out and I'm not committing to anything in my studio, but it looks like we might be able to, which will be great. Um, for those that want to, I'll always offer the option of online lessons. How and ever, it doesn't matter whether you're teaching online or in person, your website is your home base in this online marketing world. And online is where people look for things now. Yes, you can still have the recommendations from friend to friend and that is always going to be the most valuable. But if you want to branch out beyond your regular studio base, if you want to build things up, you're going to need other avenues besides purely word of mouth. And your website is the best place to start. If you don't have a website, as I said, members can get a tutorial on this to work in the middle of this month. I'm going to have a full website tutorial up there as part of a bigger marketing course. But if you don't have a website, the main thing is to get one. <laughs> and after that, you can implement some of the strategies we're talking about today. You can absolutely stay with us and hopefully you'll pick up some tips too. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to dive into my screen and we're going to look at some uh, different websites. We're going to look at two sites. One is my own site and the other is a teacher who asked if I would review her website who's interested in me doing that on one of these calls. So I'm going to dive into my site first a little bit and then we'll go and look at Rachel's and then we'll come back to mine maybe at the end. We'll see how we go. Um. When it comes to my site, <laughs> okay, let's take a look at it. When it comes to my site, I'm a perfect example of going a bit easy on yourself because, yes, I do run online businesses, but here, the teaching blog, this is the side of the site that I spend most of my time on. Uh, this is a huge part of my investment online, as well as, obviously, the biggest part is vibrant music teaching. The piano lesson area of my site can get as neglected as any other teachers. It is absolutely not a perfect example. I do my best to keep it up to date, but I don't always manage that with everything I have going on online. So what I'm going to do first is give you a quick tour of the pages that I have. The organization will look a little bit different if you are purely a studio. Um, and Rachel's site will provide a great example of that and we can learn a lot from her site as well. But I'll show you how it works for me, first of all. So I have, on the home page, I have a clear button for teaching and learning because I have to divide my site in half like that with the way I run things. You won't need to have that, you should have one big button telling people to sign up for lessons, but that's how it looks on the home page. And then this takes you to uh, if you say you want to learn the creative way, this takes you to my main lessons page, which is the same as this one under piano lessons here. What I have here is a video. That one is a little bit older for sure. I can always tell by the glasses I'm wearing. Not that they change that often, but it's pretty easy to date myself based on my glasses since I started wearing them a few years ago. Um, so that's an intro video. In that I just talk briefly about my um, studio and what we do and what things are different. It's nothing fancy, it's just me talking to camera, right? So I skipped ahead just to show you that I don't have student testimonials or anything like that. It's just me explaining what we do and making lovely faces like that one there. 
My main call to action throughout my lesson pages is join the waiting list. So call to action, for those of you not familiar, is the thing you want people to do. And every page should have a clear call to action on it. That is a big button or a very obvious link, something big and bold, that people know where they're supposed to go next. Dorothy just asked about funnels. So do I do funnel marketing? Yes, technically it is a funnel. I mean, technically funnels are really just a way to describe how marketing works. Um, people talk about setting up a funnel and you absolutely can do that. But when you talk about a marketing funnel, and I do go into this in a lot of detail in the marketing course, which is coming out later this month for members, there's different ways of looking at it and there's gross ways and there's nice ways. So yes, to answer your question simply, yeah, it is technically funnel marketing because people are moving through various stages and that's all a funnel really is used to describe. However, each page for every music teacher should have a call to action and it should be clear. And you should think about what you want that to be. For me, it's join the waiting list because that's the avenue I want them to take if they're interested. If you don't need them to join a waiting list, if you're happy for them to jump into their first lesson, it should be that. If you don't even have a waiting list, it shouldn't be this, right? If you want people to sign up for a free trial lesson, it should be that. But don't take a default option is what I'm saying here. Don't take something just because you think that's what your page should say. Think about where you want people to go. What's the ideal next step for them? And make your call to action that on every page. Okay, so you can see this is a little bit outdated. That concert image is from a couple of years ago. It's still okay though. I think it still represents the studio well. This could use updating, especially since it has the year, and I'm planning to replace that with um, a photo of our newer composition books. So I'm not going to bother updating it to 2019 right now, although I should have done that last year. <laughs> I'm going to update it once I have my new 2020 books. Then underneath here I have my piano lesson options, so here's where I describe buddy lessons and I have a paragraph about partner lessons. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that out. Um, and this is just an example of how things change and evolve over time, okay? So, and that's fine, that's what happens. Then I have some information about adult waiting, um, adult lessons, another button to join the waiting list, and then some more information about lessons. So this page has quite a lot of text. I don't expect most parents to read most of this, but for those who do want to keep reading, who do need more information in order to jump over and join the waiting list or um, to take the next step, whatever that's going to be for you, it's good to have a lot of information. One of the biggest things I see on many piano teachers' sites that I review is that there's just not enough content. There's just not enough on there. And that's going to make it really hard for parents to get to know you, number one, and also for you to rank in search. Google doesn't like showing sites that have basically nothing on them. Uh, they need text because that's what Google can read. Even if you have lots of images, Google can't really read them properly yet. So you need text, even if parents aren't going to read it, but it absolutely should be valuable and should be talking to the y your audience, okay? Anyway, so I talk about well-rounded lessons here and are my philosophies on what that means, performance opportunities and some examples of that. Um exams and my philosophy there since that's a big expectation in Ireland practice that image should definitely be improved <laughs> and then an excerpt from a summer concert I think that 2016 would be fine there if I had this updated because then it would look like the page was up to date I'm just going to give you continue my tour and then we'll come back to do some edits if we have time after that I have preschool piano and I link to these other pages by the way throughout this page so my site is well interlinked, um, meaning the, all the pages talk to each other as they're relevant. In the preschool page, I explain about preschool lessons and why they're beneficial. 
And then I go into mini musicians and what that class is. And then buddy lessons, which are more and more standard lessons and what that means. And then a short bit of information about why I think parents would choose one over the other. Why we have both options and why they would choose one or the other. This page I have updated a lot more recently. And so this is a more recent... Well, it's not that recent, but still. <laughs> this is a more recent photo and shows several of my mini musicians playing together and the photos are in general more up to date uh, and looking pretty good. So I don't think that page needs much editing at the moment. If you haven't done this with your site lately, I highly encourage you to give it a go. You might think you have things on there that you don't. You might be surprised at some of the things you've written. You might find typos and all of that is important to update regularly. Okay, for adult piano lessons, this image is not ideal and I'm not in love with myself, that's not why I put myself there. However, my only other choice was to use a stock image because I don't have photos of my actual adult students and I need to put a person on this page to make it more real. And so I've gone with myself because that was the next best option versus a stock Im uh, versus um, me working with an actual adult student. That's what would have been best. Then here I talk about different things. I have testimonials. I haven't mentioned that, but there's ones of testimonials on all of the pages that we've seen so far. And then there's some ugly nonsense here, which I need to fix. Isn't that good? So that definitely needs to be fixed. And then we have the tuition fees. I like to show my fees on my website and make everything clear because I don't want people to call me if they are going to find my lessons too expensive. Um, my lessons are not expensive for my area. But even if they were, I don't want people to call me and me to try and convince them that my prices are good. Like, that's such a waste of my time. So I prefer to lay things all out. And for me, it comes back to um, what I like and what I expect. One of my biggest annoyances when I was putting together my wedding, so I've been married seven and a half years, so this was a little while ago. When I was putting together my wedding, it drove me crazy how many websites I went to that had no indication of fees, no range, no idea. And most of the time, if I had a choice between someone who listed fees or gave some kind of a budget estimate versus someone who didn't, this is when I was an intern, okay? I was on a serious budget here. And if I had a choice between those, I just closed the window for the one that didn't have their fees there because it drove me batty. I don't... I was a full-time intern. My husband had two jobs. I don't... He definitely didn't have time. I didn't have time to call all these people only to find out that they were thousands more than I could possibly afford. And so... I just closed the browser tab. That's what happened to them. Unless I had no choice. Unless it was something where there were so little, so few websites that listed their fees that I couldn't choose one that did. But in general, I went for the one that listed their fees. So I've always had my fees on my website and I believe pretty strongly that it makes sense for most teachers. Um... Dorothy, another question there. How do I drive traffic to my website? SEO, basically. So just search engine optimization. My traffic comes from Google because my site has a lot of content. It ranks highly for a lot of different things and Google considers it to be a quality website. That's something that you build up over a long time. But yeah, that's where most of the traffic to my lesson pages specifically comes from. Now, some of my blog articles and stuff, I would get a lot of traffic from social media, but for my lessons, it's mostly Google. That's it. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm glad you agree with me. Not everyone does. I know there are different thoughts about including fees versus not, but all the arguments I've heard for not included the, including them don't make sense to me, to be honest. So I've always had them listed. So that's my sort of information page. Now, that's not to say, by the way, that all parents get in touch with me and know my fees. I still have to send them my fees, and some of them say, oh my gosh, it's so expensive, I had no idea. And, you know, you just say, okay, 
go in peace, goodbye, and move along. But um, the fees are there if they look for them. Um, the next menu item here is lesson FAQs. And so that's fairly self-explanatory, might need a little bit of updating, but I think I did this quite recently, so the link should be quite relevant. So the main things that need updating for me right now are those images that we discussed that I'm going to be updating soon, and the adult piano crap down here, whatever that is. And <laughs> these things happen with websites, okay? Don't beat yourself up if stuff like this happens to you, because it definitely happens to me. And then tuition fees, I need to update those. Those are last year's fees, so we're going to be updating those. But before I do some of those edits, and I can, you know, uh, show you what the editing process looks like in WordPress if you're curious about that, we're going to get, jump over to Rachel's site now so that we can check this out. And you can let me know if you have questions about her site and what I'm talking about in general principles here. So... This is Rachel's site, and you'll see straight away, it, it probably looks a lot slicker than mine, doesn't it? And that's great, uh, but that doesn't mean we can't improve it. Sites can always be improved. So I just wanted to highlight that because I don't want you to be beating yourself up about any of this stuff. So if your website right now looks very basic, if it doesn't exist, that is absolutely fine. Um, you can only get better from there, and everyone can always get better. Websites are something that you constantly change and tweak. It's not a book where you finalize it and make it up to a level where you're perfectly happy with it and then you publish it and probably don't change it for quite some time. It's an evolving thing. So Rachel's site is already looking great. This image is, is beautiful um, and has a certain tone. So we're going to get into that in a moment. Uh, then she has some information about her and some sheet music. So the first in instinct here is that it looks beautiful and slick. Now, here's my first consideration. If you go to the home page of my site, you'll see a lot more color and a lot more giggliness and silliness. And that's because that's what I stand for. That's who I am as a teacher. That's what people seek me out for is the creativity and the splash of color. We'll see as we dive in here whether this accurately represents who Rachel is as a teacher. Because right now, we think she's a fairly uh, serious classical teacher. That's what I think of her. I think she's going to provide, yes, it says personalized individual and group piano lessons. But it doesn't say all that much else about who she is and what type of a teacher she is. We just know that she teaches piano and that it's probably a fairly traditional approach based on the image here. The sheet music here I would question, although it looks like a nice image and it fills the space well, I think it could be something more representative of who she is. I don't know if Rachel's live, I didn't see her, but Rachel if you are live please chime in and say hi. Um, but yeah, that is what I would say about that, is this should be something with more personality. This text here, I wouldn't have centered, I don't think. Um, probably we could change what the text is, to be honest. Teaching others music education is my passion. Great. Students usually begin... Right. <laughs> this is great information. It doesn't belong on the home page in my opinion. If it does, it should be way further down. I think we need something more enticing up here and something more personal. Like, she's saying right away that she uses a common course book such as Alfred of Faber and blah 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 blah. This is teacher speak. This isn't parent speak. Okay? And yes, you are speaking as a teacher, but you should be speaking to parents not to other teachers. I mean, they're never going to hurt, most of them haven't heard of Alfred or Faber. And even if they have, they don't really care which one you use. They care that you put thought into it, but they don't care about the specifics. Um, and this, all this information could be included, it's just a bit later. 
Um, okay. This is a little thing of mine. Exclamation points. I do use them, for sure, but I'm quite careful about them because in my head this is how this reads. Teaching others music education is my passion! Okay, you might not read it in your head in that voice, but basically exclamation points do something like that. And so when I have two paragraphs in a row, beginning with a sentence with an exclamation point, it reads as a little bit too much to me. Anyway, that's just nitpicking, absolutely nitpicking. Um, but there's a third one there, right? I probably would have limited this section to one. Bells in your channel. Okay. Now, here's the most important thing about this homepage. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I have no call to action whatsoever. So, here should be a link. But even before that, above the fold, meaning before I scroll anywhere, I should have a big button to push. And right now I don't. I have nothing. So I have to decide whether I want to go to About Me, Pricing, Lessons and Policies, Testimonials, Contact, Studio Fun. You shouldn't be leaving this decision up to parents. You should decide for them with a big button. And those other options are still there. If they know they want to look at pricing first, they can go there. I didn't mean to click on that, sorry. But don't leave the choice up to them, is my message there. Have a call to action so that they know where they're supposed to go. Okay, this is the general lessons and policies. Hang on a second. No, I wouldn't include policies in that menu item. I would just say lessons or lesson info or something like that. And you can include the policies down there. That's absolutely fine. But it's, again, thinking like a parent. I don't go searching for the policies on a site if I'm a parent. That's not my... I don't care, right? <laughs> you care about your policies. The parent doesn't. Okay, now this font is a completely different size and possibly a different font. Maybe just size. Um... Yeah, no, it's just a different size, but I would stick to one size, and it should probably be somewhere in between those two. The homepage one was too small, this is too big. Okay, now, stock images. Let's talk about stock images for a moment. They look better than your pictures that you take yourself in your studio, probably, because you are not a photographer. Here's the issue, though. Parents can't imagine their child being part of the stock image. They look too polished, they're too good, and they're clearly not real. Parents want to see something that they can imagine themselves in the shoes of the person in the image. So it should be pictures of you and your students in your studio, candid shots, concert photos, all of that stuff is far preferable to this kind of thing. Like I said, this looks much more slick than mine. I acknowledge that and I take my hat off to Rachel for that. But I think it could be improved so much by a dash more personality. Like, really? Do you perform in this hall? Probably not. If you do, kudos. That's a beautiful space. But I don't think you do, right? That looks like a concert hall. So put your actual venue there. Make it realistic. Make it you. Make it what you actually stand for. Um, even here, you're talking about an intimate, informal recital. So this should show that, you know? Um, okay. Point made. I'll stop going on about that. Okay. Let's have a look at studio fun. Okay, now, here we go. This is your Insta, is it? Right, these are the images I want everywhere. The, the, I mean, not this necessarily. That's maybe a bit irrelevant. But like this. Showing your online lesson. Showing your kiddo. 
in their actual place, right? This is the church where they actually had their concert. Great. Show that. Um. Yeah, a lot more of your personality. Because I know you're this interesting creative teacher. But that's not what I'm getting here. I'm getting you are a standard teacher who offers standard, quite classical and traditional lessons. Okay. The general comment I would make outside of all of that, and I hope none of this sounds like I'm railing on Rachel, is a beautiful site, and she's done a really good job putting it together. I'm just trying to provide points and information to make it more successful as a marketing avenue. That's my goal here. So the main thing is show off your personality, show who you are. Drive parents to a specific place that you actually want them to go. Because at no point there were we given somewhere specific to go other than a contact form. But we weren't even linked to it. It was just there. Right? So it's very much let, left up to us like, oh, get in touch with us if you would like. It... No. You want to be much more direct than that. People have 50 browser windows open. They're looking at 100 different things. And their kid is jumping on their head. They need to be told exactly what to do or they're going to disappear for the most part. So if you've done the hard work of bringing someone to your site, you need to give them specific instructions on what to do next. So personality, call to action, and was there one more thing? Oh yeah, font sizes and images. More, But that's really to do with the personality. That's about showing you and who you are even more. Okay, guys, let me know if you have more general questions about websites, online marketing, all of that stuff, or if this has been useful, make sure to hit the like button below the video and subscribe to the channel while you're here as well. Um, but yeah, give me some feedback, let me know if this is useful, if you learned something from Rachel's site, if there's something you loved about it, if there's something you thought she could improve, I think she'll be open to feedback, she did volunteer for this. We'll just go back to my site briefly. Um, because I want to show you the editing process a little bit. So we're just going to update those images there, which are my fees and calendar. Okay. Oh yeah, this is fun. WordPress update. Okay. So I'm just going to add in my calendar here. Oops. By the way, on this page and several pages in my site, I also have a link at the end, which is to um, the, I was going to say catalog, that's not the right word listing page for vibrant music teachers who have opted into that so if you're a member and you haven't done that yet make sure to get yourself listed because I do drive traffic to there for people who come to my site and are not in Ireland not in Dublin or we don't have space for and they're looking for a teacher right away so that I can drive traffic to you and get you more students because I do get these inquiries from people who want to take lessons with someone like me, who's creative, who's fun, but they can't have lessons with me for whatever reason. Okay. Mm, that's funny. Let's just center that. The sizing seems to be weird. I might have exported that wrong, but anyway. That gives you a sense of how we edit things in WordPress, if you have been curious about WordPress sites. And give you uh, an idea about that. Um, so hopefully that's useful. I do recommend WordPress sites. There are other easier options out there, and mostly what I recommend is that you get a site. But, if you are weighing up Wix and Weebly and all of these different things, I'd recommend going with WordPress. It is the more reliable, longer-term option. Sorry, I put Laurie's comment up and then I didn't read it. <laughs> that was a beautiful, beautifully constructive review. When I saw the actual picture of Rachel, it didn't match the website. 
But that is what made me want her to be my teacher for my kids. Yeah, that's it. You want to see someone's smiling face. You want to see real things. So that's why when I didn't have an adult lesson image, for example, I put up myself. Like I said, that's not because I'm in love with myself. It really isn't. I don't love having images of me plastered everywhere. But if the alternative is a stock image, people are more likely to connect to me and what lessons would be like in my studio if I put up a picture of me. The best would be a picture of a student, so they could see themselves, but me is the next best option. Um, Linda, if you don't have images, I would stock images are better than no images, for sure, but I would make it your priority to get some images. Even if you can't have student images, even if you can just have yourself performing, like surely you have a picture of yourself playing piano at some stage that you're relatively happy with. Um, if you can have students or even like pictures of you playing games, anything that shows things in action, in reality. But yes, stock images are a good placeholder in the meantime. Just make sure that they reflect you as well. So don't just put up a shiny, beautiful grand piano if you only ever play on uprights, right? Like, make it simple things like that. Make it represent you and who you are and what you do. Yeah. Um, very glad to hear you've done well with your WordPress site. Yeah, some people just the, with the initial setup with WordPress self-hosted sites, they say, oh my gosh, this is so much. But as I said, for members, we will be putting up that tutorial later this month. So you can absolutely use that. Okay, guys, you can let me know if you have any follow-ups about all this website stuff and if you want me to do another one of these. If you want me to review your site on another one of these sessions, we might do another one in the future. So just email me if you would like to volunteer to have your website reviewed. Before you go, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And come back on Wednesday and Friday because we're going to do a two-parter. We're going to do a two-part series about teaching chords. So people were curious about this in one of the chats last week. What I'm going to show you is the process I've been using to teach chords from beginners to intermediates online and going through chord progressions and that's on Wednesday and then on Friday I'll be showing you how we're taking that into GarageBand to add an extra layer of creativity and tech fun into our chord progression work. So that's on Wednesday and Friday. I hope you can join me then. But in the meantime, thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a fabulous week ahead of you. And I'll catch you then. Bye for now, guys.